Welcome to today's training, cleaning and disinfection of the hemodialysis patient station. This training session will cover the environmental cleaning and disinfection principles to follow when cleaning the dialysis station between patient treatments and at the end of each treatment day. Hemodialysis, also known as dialysis, is a medical procedure providing filtration of the blood. This procedure is required for patients who experience kidney failure. Dialysis patients may have weakened immune systems, be more vulnerable to infections, or may carry bloodborne pathogens. Hemodialysis patients have an increased risk of infection due to the fact that the dialysis requires vascular access to the bloodstream for prolonged periods of time during filtration. During treatment, multiple patients receive dialysis at the same time, usually in a common, open room with infusion chairs close to each other. Because of this, there are repeated opportunities for cross-contamination and transmission of infectious organisms. Cleaning and disinfection of environmental surfaces in hemodialysis facilities is a fundamental and important strategy for providing a safe environment for patients and personnel. Each dialysis patient station usually contains a reclining infusion chair, a dialysis machine, and an IV pole. There may be other treatment equipment and supplies too. The space for each dialysis station must be considered the patient's designated treatment area. Prevention of cross-contamination of surfaces, medical equipment, and providers' hands is crucial when working in this high-risk healthcare environment. In recent years, there have been at least 18 outbreaks of hepatitis C in the hemodialysis clinic settings across the United States, with at least 96 cases reported to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Investigators found that these outbreaks were associated with lapses in basic infection control practices. These practices include improper environmental cleaning and disinfection, unsafe injection safety, and poor adherence to hand hygiene. Following the investigation, the CDC issued a health care alert to dialysis providers and recommended that each facility look at its current infection control practices, identify improvement opportunities, and implement recommended changes. The information shared in this video is intended to complement the CDC's recent publications, Environmental Surface Disinfection in Dialysis Facilities, Notes for Clinical Managers, and Checklist, Dialysis Station Routine Disinfection. Let's begin by discussing the basics of healthcare environmental cleaning and disinfection. Cleaning is the physical removal of visible dirt, dust, and organic matter. Disinfection, on the other hand, kills nearly all disease-producing germs called pathogens. Surfaces must be cleaned before they can be properly disinfected. Disinfection will not be effective in the presence of dirt, blood, or if other contaminants remains on the surface. When choosing disinfectants for dialysis facilities, low-level disinfectants, such as any EPA-registered hospital disinfectant, labeled as effective against hepatitis B virus and human immunodeficiency virus are fine to use for routine disinfection of surfaces that have not come in contact with blood. However, intermediate-level disinfectants must be available in the dialysis facility for disinfection of surfaces that are visibly soiled with blood or body fluids. Intermediate-level disinfectants will have a tuberculocidal, hepatitis B, and HIV label claim. For convenience, it may be easier to use the intermediate-level disinfectant for all purposes. When cleaning and disinfecting surfaces without visible blood, follow these guidelines. First, perform hand hygiene and apply personal protective equipment referred to as PPE. Begin by cleaning from the highest area to lowest and moving from the cleanest area towards the dirtiest. Move in one direction around the dialysis station as you clean. This method helps to reduce the risk of cross-contamination. Next, use an EPA-registered hospital disinfectant labeled as effective against hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV to clean and disinfect surfaces. Most are combination products that include a detergent cleaner and a disinfectant chemical. 
When using concentrated disinfectant, the solution should be mixed fresh each shift and used in accordance with the manufacturer's directions. Fold and refold reusable cleaning cloths during the cleaning process to reduce cross-contamination. Studies have shown use of microfiber cleaning textiles are more effective than cotton textiles at removing contaminants and are considered a best practice in cleaning. Apply friction when cleaning or disinfecting and ensure the surface being cleaned remains damp for the amount of contact time required on the product label to effectively kill pathogens. Make sure to use the proper techniques to completely remove pathogens. When there is visible blood or body fluids present, follow these guidelines. Start by performing proper hand hygiene and applying PPE. When using absorbent material such as paper towels to wipe up the blood and or body fluids, discard the waste in an appropriate receptacle. Next, apply the EPA-registered hospital disinfectant with a tuberculocidal label claim to the surface for the recommended contact time. Once the contact time has elapsed, remove the solution with the disposable cloth and discard in an appropriate container. Complete by reapplying the intermediate level EPA-registered hospital cleaner or disinfectant with disposable cloths. When finished, discard cleaning cloths then remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Now that we have reviewed this important information on the basics of how to clean and disinfect healthcare surfaces, let's look at the CDC publication, Environmental Surface Disinfection in Dialysis Facilities. This document has four primary recommendations. The first is to select proper disinfectants and determine correct elutions for routine use. The second is to establish a procedure for disinfecting the dialysis station between patients. This will ensure that all staff know who is cleaning what, how often it must be cleaned, and what process to use when performing the task. This includes cleaning and disinfecting the priming bucket, equipment, and reusable items between each patient. A written procedure of what PPE should be worn during the cleaning and disinfection process is recommended so everyone understands and consistently follows the same practices for infection prevention and control. The third recommendation is to ensure staff have been properly trained on dialysis station cleaning protocols. The written procedure should be used as the foundation of staff training. Use checklists to ensure everyone follows the same steps consistently. After training, observe staff properly performing the procedures, including the use of the equipment and techniques needed to prevent cross-contamination. This should include preparation of the approved disinfectant according to the manufacturer's directions, proper PPE selection following the manufacturer's recommended contact time for the disinfectant solution, and management of routine disinfection versus surfaces with visible blood or body fluids. The fourth recommendation is to make sure that staff has access to proper supplies. Having supplies readily available and conveniently located for staff use ensures that the process can be successfully performed every time. The publication also issues these two reminders. Never move patients until they are hemodynamically stable and do not begin to clean the station for the next patient until the first one is left. Never reuse disposable supplies on another patient. Now that we've covered the basics of cleaning and disinfecting environmental surfaces in hemodialysis patient stations, let's look together at the highlights of the CDC publication, Checklist, Dialysis Station Routine Disinfection. This list can be used if station surfaces are not visibly soiled. Using this flow diagram, you can see that if there is visible blood, you would follow these directions to first clean and disinfect the area before moving to the regular cleaning and disinfecting that we use this checklist for. So when no visible blood is present, we will complete part A of the CDC checklist before beginning the routine disinfection of the station. This portion of the checklist has several key reminders, including the disconnecting, 
taking down and discarding of used blood tubing and dialyzers in leak-proof containers. Checking for visible blood or soil. Ensuring that the priming bucket has been emptied. That the patient has left the station. And discarding single-use supplies. Reusable supplies such as clamps should be moved to an area where they will be cleaned and disinfected before being stored or returned to a dialysis station. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. And once Part A of the checklist has been completed, move to Part B. Routine disinfection of the dialysis station after patient has left station. Now, Part B of the checklist includes step-by-step -step instructions on PPE use and surface disinfection. Wear clean gloves. Apply disinfectant to all surfaces in the dialysis station using a wiping motion along with friction. Now, these surfaces include the dialysis chair, tray tables including under the tray tables, blood pressure cuffs, and IV pole including the top hooks. Disinfect frequently touched surfaces including the dialysis machine, the control panel, top, front, and sides, touchscreens, as well as any countertops and computer keyboards in the patient station. Ensure surfaces are visibly wet with disinfectant. Allow surfaces to air dry. Disinfect all surfaces of the emptied priming bucket. Allow the bucket to air dry before reconnection or reuse. Keep used or potentially contaminated items away from the disinfected surfaces. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Do not bring patient or clean supplies to the station until these steps have been completed. This completes the environmental cleaning process between patient treatments that is usually the responsibility of the clinical staff. Staff must thoroughly clean all dialysis facility patient care areas at the end of each workday. This process is usually completed by the healthcare environmental service workers or staff who may be contracted by the facility for cleaning after hours. Staff must receive area-specific training and orientation prior to being assigned cleaning responsibilities. Assignments may vary by facility. This includes specialty equipment located in the area, as well as information on any potential safety hazards associated with environmental cleaning in this area. Principles of Cleaning and Disinfection for Dialysis EVS Staff Perform hand hygiene and apply gloves before cleaning the patient station. Designate sets of cleaning cloths or disposable germicidal wipes for each patient station. Use microfiber cloths and mops when available. When cleaning, clean from highest area to lowest and from the cleanest areas moving towards the dirtiest. These practices, along with moving in one direction around the dialysis station area as you clean, will help to reduce the risk of cross-contamination. When using a disinfectant cleaner, Wet the surface, use friction to clean, and allow to air dry. Fold the cleaning cloth in a series of squares to provide a number of potential cleaning surfaces. A wadded cloth does not clean efficiently. Replace cloth as needed. More than one cloth may be required for a patient station. Never use the same cleaning cloth for more than one patient station. Never re-dip a used cloth into clean disinfectant solution. For cleaning areas in addition to the patient stations, clean and disinfect all horizontal and vertical surfaces in dialysis treatment area, including cabinets, counters, shelves, dialysis chairs, and equipment using a clean, multi-folded cloth and EPA-registered hospital disinfectant solution per manufacturer's instructions. Spot clean and disinfect walls. Wet mop the floor with an EPA-registered hospital disinfectant. Check and refill all hand hygiene product dispensers in nursing stations and at patient stations, including soap, paper towels, lotion, and alcohol-based hand sanitizer. 
Because environmental surfaces in hemodialysis settings can easily be contaminated with bloodborne pathogens, your attention to detail when cleaning and disinfecting equipment and surfaces is extremely important. The cleaning responsibilities are shared between the nursing staff and environmental services workers. Dialysis providers can ensure safe care by making sure the facility adheres to the basic infection control standards we have shared today.